everyone. I pray that you are doing well. I have been working on a series of videos that I'm going to be uploading here that has to do with um, the body of Christ. It has to do with false prophets and false teachers and not preaching the good news, basically, in the body of Christ. The Lord has just been placing this on my heart to speak out about it and to do an, you know, an in-depth study of it, of what we're seeing so rampantly going on in the churches today. And it's not so much I really want to say the physical churches, like the small-time churches or anything like that, because I go to a lot of churches, and I don't hear the type of messages that I hear on YouTube, per se. And on YouTube, it's like just an explosion that has gone off with, um, you know, it just seems like everyone and their brother and their uncle and their grandpa get up and they are a prophet here on YouTube, and that's that's all fine and dandy, okay, but we also need to be speaking forth the truth. We need to be speaking forth God's truth and God's love and God's uh, light unto this world. We are a city on a hill, amen? We're supposed to be shining forth, be shining forth unto all men, we're not supposed to be snuffing out our light, so to speak, putting our, our, our light under a lampstand. You know, it talks about this in the Gospels, that we are not to do this, that we are to be a peculiar people, to be standing out, and what? Leading the way, leading the way to Christ. And what I'm finding is that so many people are not finding their way to Christ because they run across so many channels that all they're doing is speaking about doom and gloom and destruction and fear. And I just need to say that bluntly. Um, I, I was recording something yesterday, and it was about a form of witchcraft spirit that has entered into the body of Christ by exactly what I was saying. And I'll get a little into that because I don't want to go too deep into it. And the reason why is because... As I was recording yesterday and speaking out about this witchcraft spirit that God has been showing me in the body of believers, it has like creeped in. And I got this oppression and depression come over me and I had to like stop recording. And I tried it again and it was like four times that I tried to record on this subject and I kept getting attacked with this oppression. So I was like, all right, you know, I, I did not pray you know, I did not cover myself. I did not put the armor of God when I started to speak out about this. And, uh, you know, evidently, you know, I was, you know, spiritual battle there going on. But anyway, so I'm not going to get too deep into that because I really, when I, when I bring that forward, I want to bring forth all the scriptures that back that up and everything God has been showing me with regard to this. We as the body of Christ, we as the, as believers. We're supposed to be spreading more good news than there is bad news. Amen. I mean, we're supposed to be telling others about Christ and what Christ did for us. We are supposed to be uh, talking about the finished work of the cross, the finished work of, of Jesus, what he did for us on that cross and how he died for all mankind, all mankind, not just a specific group, all you know, God desires none to perish, but all to come unto repentance. There's not like, you know, just a little clause in there saying, you know, oh, only a specific group. And you find this on YouTube a lot. People will be saying, you know, there's only a special group of people. Like, for example, they'll say a special group of people that are going to be raptured. That, you know, that's a lie from the pit of hell, Okay. To put it bluntly, it's just a lie from the pit of hell. And then, you know, you go onto YouTube and, and people say, oh, look, you know, we're getting all the same messages, you know, the same dreams about the rapture. And it's like this small group, again, that they're all getting the same dreams. But yeah, I mean, if you think about it, just put in two witnesses into YouTube, into the search bar. And you will see thousands of people coming forth and saying they're the two witnesses. Thousands of Christians coming forth and saying God told them that they were the two witnesses. So are they all getting the same message too? 
we, we need to discern. We need to go into prayer when we receive any type of messages, um, prophetic messages, um, which is through the spirit of prophecy. And when we have dreams, we need to take them to the Lord, not just uh, take a shower, have a vision, and jump up on YouTube with your hair wet, saying, I can't wait, I can't wait, I just need to share this vision I just had. That's not taking all things into prayer, to the Lord, into your prayer closets, and making sure what you're receiving is from God, from the Holy Spirit. You know, we are, are not all, like, bulletproof, meaning that we can't be deceived or we can't receive something that is just from our own subconscious. We all, we all have to be careful of what we say and what we speak forward. There is power in the tongue, right? It speaks for, we can speak forth life or death. Well, if you go around to a lot of these channels, all it is is death. All it is is darkness. They're receiving messages completely of just doom, gloom, death, darkness, destruction. And I don't find any light. I don't find anyone talking about Christ, about repentance, about salvation. It's all about, oh, look out, you know, I got, I got a warning. I'm putting up, a, I'm being a watchman and I'm putting up a warning alert. I mean, how many warning alerts does people get throughout the years that nothing comes to pass? And I say that in love because we need to start understanding how we're receiving things and how we're going to speak them forth. Because again... We have power in the tongue. Are you going to speak death over your family? I mean, ask yourself that. Those that are coming up with your dreams and coming up with your messages of all this darkness, would you speak that same stuff over your family, over your children, over your spouses, over your loved ones? I, I hope not. I really hope not. Instead, what we find is so many people going forward and saying, please pray for my loved ones. Please, please pray for my children, right? Have them come into what? Salvation. They're lost right now. Have, have God, you know, bring in angels, intercessory, and so forth. We always want to bring in the light to our own family. But when it comes to the nation of America, it's like, oh, well, that's toast. It's done. You don't know that. No one knows that. You know, I have hope for this country. I truly do. And, and God has been, you know, something I've been praying on for over a year. I haven't really spoke out about that. I, this is something I've been praying about for a year. And because I had received a message about it over a year ago. And I haven't come up and said, hey, okay, guys, I received this message. No, it's something that I want to make sure, and I'm, le I'm being led more and more into the Word and more into prayer. And God has been revealing some things to me through His Word and in prayer and in meditation. And yes, I've received several confirmations, and God has even led me to others that um, are speaking and hearing the same things. So it's not always, you know, constant fear, fear and doom and gloom. We have to watch what we say. You know, this, this nation, America, we live here. Those of us that are in America, we live here. Why do we want to destroy it? Many will say, oh, well, God's going to bring judgment. Okay, well, I mean, but while we're here, aren't we supposed to be doing the work of the Lord? about the Father's business, out there, you know, bringing the good news, reaching lost souls for salvation. You know, Jesus is knocking on doors a lot. Knock, 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 and, you know, and sometimes I feel like he's knocking on a lot of Christian doors and they're not opening the door to him so that he can come in and that he can spread his light. The kingdom of God is within us. We need, to we need to shed that light unto the world so that others, know, they'll, they'll want to come to Christ. We'll find many believers today on, you know, they're coming up on their channels and then unbelievers come in behind and they'll say, oh, these are trolls or these are naysayers or what have you. But 
why don't you sit back and really listen to what they're saying for a moment they're coming up and they're saying you know all these things about prophecies or dreams and they're coming against what you're speaking as far as darkness. And yet you're sitting there going, oh, you know, we're not going to listen to you. But what they're actually doing is they're speaking for the light against the darkness that you're speaking. So it's kind of like flipped around a little bit right now, what I'm noticing on YouTube. And I don't think that we should, should ban or, or kick out anyone that's just because they're not a believer. That's what we're here for, is to minister to the unbelievers, minister to those that aren't saved, minister to the babe in Christ, minister unto all. Because as we minister unto other people, we minister to ourselves. It's like, you know, we're, we're the student and the teacher, and the teacher and the student. You know, I know that's, you know, when I minister to people, I mean, I learn right along with them. That's the way it should be. Because we're forever learning on this path that we walk. And while we're here on earth, we are to be spreading that light and spread, spreading the truth of Jesus Christ. The spirit of prophecy is like written in Revelation 19, for instance. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is the true spirit of prophecy. Whereas 1 Corinthians, where Apostle Paul was speaking about the, the spiritual gifts, and he was listing them all and talking about, you know, some will prophesy, but the greatest gift to desire is to prophesy, right? Well, people have taken that a little over the top because they're like, well, you know, it's even written in the word that we should desire to prophesy. Well, go back again to Revelation 19.10. What is the spirit of prophecy? The testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what Apostle Paul was relating to that we should have that spirit to testify of what? The finished work of Jesus, the finished work of the cross, to let all know that we are under the new covenant through the bloodshed of our, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are now in the new covenant. We're no longer in the old covenant. We're in the new covenant. Glory to God. We have life and life more abundantly. And... Words. I have a couple of scriptures up. John eight twelve. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, ask yourselves. I'm not putting anyone down, but I'm just saying, ask yourselves. You know, when you're listening to this, go into prayer. Pause it if you have to, after you hear what I'm about to say. What you're listening to, is it all light? Is it showing Jesus as the light of the world? Or is it representing Jesus as darkness? Are they speaking forth darkness and death? Are they constantly having prophecies and dreams all about destruction and warnings and this and that, that everyone needs to look out, okay? Is that same individuals that you're listening to, are they counterbalancing it with the way to salvation and all the good things about Jesus Christ and about God and his glory and the kingdom of God? And the finished work of the cross, I mean, do, do they bring forth messages like this? Or is it always just like, oh, let's look at the world and what's going on in the world. Let's take the, the news headlines and let's make that into a sermon. Or are they reading out of the Bible? Are they reading from the spirit of truth and life and love? Ask yourself that. Who are you following? Who are you listening to? We have to guard our ears and our eyes. That is gateways into our spirit and our mind and our soul. And we get fill, if we get filled up with too much darkness, guess what? We're going to be walking in darkness. So what else do I have up here that I wanted to touch on? In Matthew uh, 5, for instance. Matthew 5, 14. Ye are the light of the world. This is Jesus speaking. 
You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your, sh let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What is the good works? It's being about the Father's business. It's going forth and spreading the gospel. It's going forth and helping the, the poor and the widows and the single moms and the elderly and those unfortunate. It's going forth and ministering and telling others about Christ. Giving your, your, your life should be a living testimony of Jesus. You shouldn't wait for an opportunity to share your testimony. When you speak to any individual that you encounter, they should hear the testimony of Jesus Christ just through your words of how you're living your life and how your light is shining. Amen? So what else do I got up here? Okay, I wanted to touch on this real quick. 2 Corinthians 11, uh, verses 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, Satan's ministers, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. We got a lot of false teachers running around that are disguising themselves as Christians. You shall know them by their fruit. But a lot of times, nobody's examining the fruit. They're just listening to a message going into the ears, but they're not examining the fruit that it's coming from. They're not examining what's being produced out of that person's life or being produced out of their ministry, be, being produced out of their words. They're just listening, but they're not hearkening unto the spirit of truth. And I'm going to get into something else in a second, too. What else do I got? One other scripture. Oh, 2 Corinthians 13, 1. And this will be the third time I am coming to you. This is Apostle Paul. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word w shall be established. I'm bringing this up for a purpose, because this is something God was showing me. When we come into agreement with a, a message of darkness and, and destruction and fear and doom and gloom, when we put our amens, when we come into agreement that, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That's going to happen. God's going to judge. And you're coming into man or woman's words, and you're agreeing with that. That matter is established. It's being established by your words, your tongue. It's coming out of your mouth, coming out of your heart. As a man thinketh, so he is. We have to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. So, I'm just encouraging you right now that as you go around, and I'm going to bring up like a quick example before I close this out. I'm just encouraging you to pause for a moment before you put your amen, before you come into agreement with a particular prophecy or dream. Pause for a second and say, okay, let me, let me go to the Lord about this. Let me, let me check in with the Spirit about this one. And then whatever you receive, then go forth. But there's too, there's too many quick to respond. There's too many quick to say amen to stuff. And I'll give you this example quickly. I don't, I don't say anyone's names, so you know me. I don't put people on blast. But some, uh, a sister had sent me a video about a month ago and asked me if I would check this out because she said, this is so unsettling to me. And is it just me? So I went to it and I listened to it. And it was a, a brother in the Lord who proclaims he's a prophet of God, which in the upcoming videos we're going to talk about um, new covenant prophets versus old covenant prophets. So that's just a heads up. But um, he was proclaiming, <clears throat> excuse me, he was proclaiming that he received a dream and a message with regard to two other brothers that are on YouTube that have their own channels slash ministries. And um, 
He said in this dream, in this message, that what he received from God, quote unquote, was that they were going to die. That they were going to die, and he got into details of how each one was going to die. And I don't want to speak that for us. Um, and then he's like, well, you know, if they don't repent, this is what's going to happen. Being obedient, goodbye. That was it. And I was like utterly shocked. I'm like, what? So I was thinking, wow, this guy's probably really getting slammed in the comments was as I scrolled down to look what, what others were saying, because I was about to say something like, whoa, dude, you know, and I looked down and everyone was coming into agreement with what he was saying. I was like, so all of you folks are coming into agreement with other people's death? I mean, you're coming into agreement with a dream that he says is from God that you really don't know if it was from God? I mean, it's shocking. I have to say it is shocking to see some things that I'm witnessing. And it's it, we have to be careful of what we're watching and what we're coming into agreement with. Like I said, would you, would you be amening and coming into agreement if that same person said that over your family member? Or over your child? Or over your spouse, wife, or husband? Would you say amen? We got to think. Think before we act. Think before we speak. Think before we leave comments. It's, oh, it's all in the spirit realm that we're working in here. It's a spiritual battle. That's why we put on the armor of God. Amen? So... We, not, we have to quit being so attracted to the bad news and be more attracted to the good news. Amen. Glory to God. We need to be more attracted to that which is good, which brings fruit, which brings light, which brings, it produces things in other, it produces action. It produces faith without works is dead, right? It produces action. It produces the fruit to grow if we're, if we're, not if we have like a soil and we're not throwing any seeds down, there ain't nothing going to be growing. Okay, you're going to be standing and looking at dirt. So, we have to throw some good seeds down, we have to water it. Water it by how not only with the word of God, but by what we do, what we say. That's not a work salvation. You go and plant a garden in your backyard, right? If you don't throw down some vegetable seeds, you're not going to have any vegetables. We, we need to start putting aside what others are saying, oh, that's a work salvation, or that's under the law, and that's whatever. No, we're not under the law. We're not under the old covenant anymore. Like I said, we're under the new covenant. And we have to start operating in that. And once we start operating in the new covenant... You're going to start seeing more fruit producing in your lives, in other lives around you, and in your own ministries, in your own channels. God is calling many people up to start doing this, to produce the good fruit, not the rotten stuff, and get out of the flesh and start operating in the fruit of the Spirit. The world is hungry. It's hungry for the love of God. It's hungry for truth. And the babes in Christ need to be led in the right direction. There's too much misleading going on. Too much. And, and there's so much confusion. We do not have a spirit of confusion. We do not have a spirit of fear. We have a sound mind. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world. We know things are going to be happening in the world. Things have been happening in the world for centuries. History, look at history. Our eyes are not to be upon that. Our eyes are to be upon Christ, upon God, upon love in our hearts and putting that forth. But yes, in the upcoming videos that I'm going to be uploading that I've been working on, talking about this witchcraft spirit because what's going on is these people are coming up proclaiming that they are prophets and they have a soothsaying uh, and it's almost like fortune telling it's a witchcraft spirit 
Because in their messages, there's no light. It's all dark. So I'll get more into that, like I said, in, in the other videos. So I just wanted to encourage you today to just take this message and take it to the Lord. Take these words and say, you know, am I? Ask yourselves, am I? Am I attracted to bad news? Am I attracted to the world events? Am I attracted to teachers that all they do is produce death and darkness and destruction in their words, in their so-called messages from God? I'm not mocking them. I'm just saying we can all be deceived. We got to be careful. We have to be careful. Others are listening to us. So I'm going to leave it at that. And like, it's because I got so much more to talk about in the other videos that will bring it home a little deeper. So I thank you all for listening. I love you all and God bless you.